Okay, so in front of us we have an RTX 2080. This is the MSI Ventus, I believe. So this card was sent to me by a customer in Sweden. So anyways, like all the broken cards we get, we want to first start by checking for short on the base voltage rails. So I have my multimeter in continuity mode. If I probe something connected to ground, like ground itself, my multimeter beeps. So, we're going to start with uh, the base voltage rails at the PCI Express slots. If you don't know, at the PCI Express slot we can find both 12 volts and 3.3. So anyways, to, in order to check uh, 12 volts, we can check any one of these three pins, and we're perfectly good. Actually, for this particular card, you want to check after the fuse, come to think of it, here. So again, we're still perfectly good. So to check 3.3 volts, okay, you can start at this notch and go four pins left. The fifth pin going left is ground, so we can find that ground pinned, and we can go one to the right. And we're perfectly good. Now we want to go to resistance mode and check the voltage rails generated by the, generated by the card itself to see if we have a short on any of them. Okay, to start with, we're going to check uh, 5 volts. So if you don't know, 5 volts is this inductor here. I expect to see something in the kilo ohm range. 9 kilo ohms, more or less. So now we want to check 1.8 volts. If you can't tell, 1.8 volts is on, uh, found on this inductor here. And we have uh, 18 ohms. That's, um, I'm uh, a bit worried for this card's long-term health. Anyways, um, ignoring that, let's um, hmm. let's go ahead and check the PEX rail next. And the PEX is over here, by the way. So this, it's this inductor. 9 ohms, that's more or less normal. You should expect to see somewhere in the bar, something in the ballpark of uh, six, no, 4 to 8 ohms for an RTX 20 or 30 series card. And 9 ohms is perfectly fine. So, okay, now we want to check the memory. So the, for the memory, um, it depends on the, what resistance you get, depends mostly on the brand. So in this case, we have 63 ohms. This is because we have micron memory on this card. But if you had, let's say, a card with Samsung memory, you could expect to see about 20 ohms. But in either case, the uh, card is not short, except for maybe that uh, worrying, worryingly low resistance on 1.8 volts. But um, we'll go ahead and uh, boot the card anyways and see, see what we can do for it. Okay, now that the card is plugged in, let's go ahead and measure a few voltages. Okay, so I'm just going to assume that we have the base voltage rails. If we don't have 5 volts, then I'll have to consider otherwise, but let's see. 5 volts, okay. Let's see, do we have 1.8? Okay, so we don't have 1.8. Because we don't have 1.8, we won't have the uh, V-Core. Yep, 0. And because we don't have the V-Core, we won't have the PEX. And because we don't have the V-Core, we also won't have the uh, memory. There we go. Yep, so we're missing 1.8 volts. I should note that this is a... Uh, Rather common issue on um, RTX 20 series cards, believe it or not. The uh, circuitry for generating the enable signal on 1.8 volts is um, quite unreliable, surprisingly enough. You know, it's very good on GTX 10 series, but they've, uh, you know, NVIDIA's uh, PCB engineers have made a mistake on the RTX 20 series cards. So if you don't know, the buck converter for 1.8 volts is a GS916. Um, you can use the data sheet for an AOZ... Um, Whatever it is, I'll list it in the description. I can't remember its name off the top of my head. So for, an, for a bar converter, we want to check three things. We want to check voltage in, we want to check VCC, and we want to check enable. Typically, voltage in is 12 volts, VCC is typically 5 volts, and enable is usually about 3.3. I should note, okay, actually I'll show you where I'm going to um, measure this stuff. Okay, so when I measure voltage in, VCC, and enable, so this would be a bit hard to see, but VCC, I believe, is a, it's a, attached to this capacitor over here on this end. There are these two small capacitors. It's the uh, left side of the right capacitor. As for um, voltage in, it's going to be found on a capacitor over here. And it's from uh, this particular, um, I think it's the six pin. Or I don't know, it's one of these two. Anyways, as for enable, I will be measuring it on a solder pad over... Hold on. As I said, I think I'll be measuring it on, I think... Um, Either this or this solar pad. I can't remember off the top of my head. Okay, now let's first uh, measure VCC. 5 volts, which we have. Now let's measure voltage in. 12 volts. Okay, now let's measure enable. 0 volts. Okay, so as you can see, we're missing enable. Anyways, so the way enable works on this particular card, and it's best if I uh, give another zoom in. So like I was saying, the way it works is that, okay, so we have enable and it's found on the solder pad um, over around here. So it's pin 2 of the GS9216 down here. So this enable signal can be mapped to a diode actually over, um, so there's a diode over here. It's either these ends and one of these ends then connects to this logical AND gate over here. So this logical AND gate, typically speaking, um, on an RTX 20 series card, or at least a 2080 like PCB, 
has the marking, um, the PCB marking, U622. This is just your standard logical AND gate like you always find on graphics cards. Typically, it's um, these logical AND gates are very similar to a um, MC74VHC1G08, I think. Whatever it is, I'll also link that in the description. This logical AND gate, if you don't know how these works, how these uh, gates work, they require three signals in order to output something, where the output in this case is the 1.8 volt enable signal. So the three signals they require to start to you know output something are VCC, input one, and input two, or as it's often called, input A and input B. So actually, let's just start with input A. So input A is actually the P good of, um, of the five volt rail, and it's uh, if you don't, and the, where the five volt rail is this, the five volt, sorry, I should say the 5-volt buck converter. So this buck converter, I think, is, an, is a uh, MP1475, though it could be an RT7296F that is used on some cards. But anyways, it's, it's uh, input 1 for that logical AND gate is the PGOR, as in it's a 2-ohm connection between PGOR and uh, the logical AND gate's uh, first input. Now, the second input and VCC on our logical AND gate over, let's see here, are actually bridged. So they're bridged by 7 kilo ohm resistor over here. So you don't actually need both, you just need one to turn on and the other naturally gets its signal or power or whatever. So input two is actually the outputs, or at least derived from the outputs of a, I think it's a buck converter, it could be an LDO, I'm not sure. So this component here, this is a GS7155. Unfortunately there's, um, there is a data sheet for GS7155, but not in this package. So I can tell you that the outputs are pins one to three, and that enable is pin six, and or at least it's connect. Or at least pin six is connected to be good of the five volt buck converter, which is typically used as, as enable. And that pin seven through ten either constitute at least voltage in and maybe VCC as well. Though I can't tell which one's which. We need to check uh, the logical AND gate to see what we're missing. Likely we're missing uh, input two and by extension VCC, since we probably have P good. But if we don't, we have to figure figure out what's gone wrong. Okay, so the card is on. Let's first check the outputs of our logical AND gate. We know, we know this will be zero volts, but um, well, maybe it's not zero volts. But anyways, so as you can see, we have zero volts. Okay, so obviously we're not generating. It's the uh, gate is not generating enable. So now let's check our input one. Like I said, this is our P good from the five volt buck converter, and we have three point four. So we have that. So logic. So naturally speaking, if the gate is perfectly functional, we'll be missing input two, which I'll check in a moment. So I have my probe on input 2 and we have 0 volts. Now since we don't have anything on input 2, I suspect we won't have VCC either. VCC is gone too. So okay, we are missing both input 2 and VCC. So like I said earlier, input 2 and uh, VCC are derived from this uh, GS7155. It's um, input 2 is, it's, it's not d the, it's not a, a direct, it doesn't have a direct connection to the output of GS7155 here, but it's it does have a it's bridged through a resistor around here as well. So it goes so the output of GS7155 goes through one resistor and then it goes to the input of our um, input two of our logical AND gate and also VC, by extension VCC of our logical AND gate since input two and VCC are bridged by a seven kilo, seven or so kilo ohm resistor or at least that's what it measures in circuit. Which means that, again, we have to now check this buck converter. So we want to be checking both the uh, enable, the voltage in, and which and what I also presume is VCC, not that I can tell, and of course the output. So let's turn the card on. So to check the output, we can just check, I think, this end of this capacitor here. Nothing. And on the other end, nothing. Okay. So we don't have output for our GS7155. So now we need to check um, voltage in, or maybe VCC. I think they're bridged in this case. So checking this capacitor. 5 volts, so we have voltage in and probably VCC, so then we need to check enable, and enable can be found on a resistor on the back, in particular it can be found, actually you know what, I'll just measure it first, so, and then we'll show you. Okay, turning the card on again, we can be found on, oh, actually I see the problem, so anyways, as you can see, we have uh, 0 volts, in fact I know exactly what's wrong, or 73 millivolts, anyways, so the reason why we don't have input actually, sorry, enable for our GS7155, which generates input 2 of our, our logical AND gate and by extension VCC, is because we're actually um, missing a component. So let me zoom in. So the component we're missing is actually this here. So this uh, carries enable to um, our GS7155, and the enable is actually the P good 
of our um, five volt buck converter. So not only does P good go directly to the logical AND gate, but then it's used for enable for GS71155, and it passes through this resistor, which as you can see is missing. Likely this resistor is supposed to be zero ohms. I'll, I'll look at a few other cards I have lying around. It's probably just zero ohms, but whatever I, value I settle on, I'll um, let you know. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and uh, replace this component and see if the card boots. So as you saw, I replaced the uh, resistor on the back of the board. Let's go ahead and boot the card. So I'm just going to check the PEX rail, which is this here. So we do have the PEX rail, so the card should be de detected then in a moment. And as you can see, we have a virus splash screen. So our card, the card is now in a bootable state. So let's go ahead and put the cooler on and stress test it. Okay, so as you can see, the uh, card's running game. At this point, it's been running game for about an hour, so I'm saying the card is uh, perfectly functional. So despite being a very simple repair, and I apologize if you were hoping for something more complicated, I've been rather busy recently, but despite being a very simple repair, um, the lesson here is that you really wanna, if you fix a lot of the RTX 20 series cards, you really ought to get familiar with how Enable is formed on the 1.8 volt buck converter. If you've seen um, a lot of my videos, or at least my RTX 20 series videos, then you know that um, it's actually rather common for these uh, 20 series cards to be missing Enable on 1.8 volts. Um, sometimes it's due to a missing component like this, but in other cases, like the 20 Ti video I have, it's due to a naturally occurring electrical fault, and it's um, not always that straightforward to diagnose. But anyways, I hope you learned something watching this video. If my channel or my videos have helped you out, consider becoming a patron, link in the description, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.